What's up, Crab Crew? Welcome back. If you're new here, haven't done so already, make sure you hit the red button that says subscribe and the bell icon next to it so you can get notified whenever we post new videos and upcoming free crab giveaway alerts. So today we're going to be trying something a little different. We are going to be going over all things crabs. Big surprise. I'm sure a lot of you already think you know everything there is to possibly know about blue crabs, but sit tight, watch this video, and I guarantee by the end of it you will know something that you didn't know before. Alright, so the blue crab, otherwise known as the Chesapeake blue crab, has a scientific name of Kalinectes sapidus, which translates to savory beautiful swimmer. The crab is an invertebrate, which means it does not have a spine, and they are omnivores, which means they eat both plants and meat, just like people. On average, crabs typically live up to four years old, and it takes them about a year to a year and a half to fully mature. On record, the largest blue crab caught out of Maryland was 10.72 inches and weighed 1.1 pound. Although your typical crab is going to be more like between 5 and 7 inches long, 5 inches being the legal size limit that you must reach, and 7 inches being, out of my personal experience, the bigger crabs that I have found. Now, crabs come in three different stages. First stage is the hard shell, which most of us know because that's the crab that we typically eat. There is also a soft shell crab, which is a crab that has gone through the molting process and shed its hard shell, and underneath of it is basically the meat in a softer inner shell that will become hard over time. Typically takes about 24 to 48 hours for a soft shelled crab to turn into a hard shelled crab if it is left in the water. In between the soft shell and the hard shell stage is the peeler stage. This is when a hard shell crab starts peeling its harder out shell and releases the soft inner shell underneath. The crab is most vulnerable in these two states, the peeler state and the soft shell state, obviously because it doesn't have any protection and it can get eaten by numerous of other things such as rockfish and even other crabs. Not to mention soft shell crabs, if you haven't had tried them yet, they are a delicacy and they are amazing. You can basically fry up the entire crab. You don't have to break its shell off or anything. No cutting your fingers, no poking yourself. You just put it in the fryer, cook it however you want it, and then eat it as is, and it is delicious. A lot of people eat soft crabs by frying them, but you can have them other ways. Uh, my mom actually made one. She baked it in the oven after stuffing it with goat cheese and then put it on a sandwich and that was pretty freaking amazing and I've never seen anyone do anything like that before so there are all kinds of things you can do with soft crabs you just gotta sky's the limit use your imagination and go for it all right back to crab facts next we're going to talk about crab growth so blue crab growth actually relates to the molting process they need to molt their hard shell in order to grow just like a hermit crab so growth is very strongly affected by the temperature that the crab is in. In my own personal experiences, um, the optimal water temperature, now this is the temperature that the water is, is between 60 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the optimal water temperature for crab growth. In regards to air temperature, anything below 50 degrees is going to be a negative reaction on the growth rate of the crabs. So the air temperature needs to be warm enough so that the water temperature is between 60 to 68 degrees. Now say if you are storing live crabs out of the water, like say you caught some and you want to put them in the fridge and keep them on ice until you go to cook them, you want to keep them around right around that same temperature, um, around 50 degrees would be okay. I'm going to say 48 to 55 degrees would be optimal if you want to keep them in the fridge. Keep in mind though, once the crabs come out of the water, there is no potential for growth. Not to mention they don't live that long out of water, so once they're out of water, they only have a couple days left of life before they die. 
There are several ways of identifying a crab that is about to shed its outer shell. These are called peelers. There are different stages of peelers. Um, the biggest one I use is you look at one of their back fins. You can kind of see, if you hold it up to the light, a line right around the inside of their shell. And that'll basically, it shows you where their inner meat is at and it tells you that they're about to shell, shed. You can also see on their back end where the back shell meets the apron, um, it'll actually start to split apart and you will be able to see the inside of the crab soft shell. At the marina, we actually used to have our own soft shedding crab tanks where the crabbers would they bring in their crabs, they would give us their peelers. Um, we would put the peelers in the tanks and let them continue to grow and shed their shell and then when they shed their shell and they turn into a soft crab, we pluck them up out of the water and put them in the refrigerator and that they'll stay alive just like hard crabs for a couple days at the same temperature we talked about earlier around um, 45, 55 degrees, 48, 55 degrees I mean and um, you just keep them like that. So unfortunately, we don't have our soft crab operation down here anymore. We actually took it apart to rebuild it and make it better. Um, it is not finished yet, but whenever we do finish that, you know, I'll be making a video of it and showing you exactly how you can shed soft crabs. Now this next topic is going to be a little controversial because nobody actually agrees. There is no unified, universal way of sizing crabs. Everyone does it their own way. If you go to one crab house, they're large, maybe another crab house's size small. So the size of blue crabs. Crabs are known as number ones, which are also known as jimmies. These are basically the larger of the male crabs. Number twos are the smaller of the male crabs and also more light crabs. So say a crab that has just shed its shell and hardened is going to be a light crab because it hasn't had enough time for its meat to fully impact the shell. So it's going to be a light crab because it just, it literally just grew that outer shell. Now these crabs are going to be your number twos, smaller and lightweight male crabs. Next, you have your number threes, which are the female crabs. Female crabs are all mixed sizes. They do not sort them out commercially. The commercial crabbers do not sort out females. So you can get females from literally any size. They do not have a size limit as long as they are mature females. The way you can tell if a female is mature or not is look at the apron, which is the little piece on their stomach. If the apron is triangular and has a reddish tint to it, it is an immature female crab and it is illegal to keep and you must throw it back. This helps ensure that the population will continue to grow and that you're not taking crabs that are too small or immature. Um, also with female crabs, you can get small female crabs, but you can also get some pretty big ones. I've seen jumbo sized female crabs. Now a jumbo in our book at Chesapeake Crab is anything right around seven inches. It can be six and a half inches. It we kind of just depends on how big the crab is. A lot of places judge crab size based on the length in inches from tip to tip, which isn't really that great of a method to use because you can have a crab that's super small and have really long tips that makes it a large crab and it's actually a small male crab. So we do, we actually measure it tip to tip and then we judge it based on the width and the heaviness of the crab itself. So each crab we take by hand, hand measure it with a measure, a crab measuring stick. And then we feel just judging based on the looks and the feel of it, is this crab a medium? So for example, our medium crabs are between five inches to five and a half inches. Now say I pull out a five and a half inch crab that's on the line of being a medium and a large. I'm sorry, a small and a medium. But if that crab has super short points and it's super, super fat and heavy, I'll throw it in with the mediums. If that crab is on the smaller side, like say it has super, super long tips that makes it a five and a half, but it's skinny, I'll throw it in with the smalls. So that way you're getting more of a variety, more of an actual categorized crab size instead of just going by the width in inches. So the way we size crabs, it goes a small is between five to five and a quarter. Um, up around in July, they actually increase the minimum size from five inches to five and a quarter. And that's when we upgrade our sizes and smalls go from five and a quarter to five and a half. 
That also makes sense because crabs tend to get bigger as summer goes on. When they have more time with more heat, they start growing more and you get bigger crabs. That's why crabs in the fall are always fatter, heavier, and bigger than crabs you'll get at the beginning of the season in May. That's also why crabs tend to be more expensive in the spring and early summer because if they're getting local crabs, they're not catching that many. And if they are getting crabs, they are probably getting them from out of state, somewhere down south where the crabs are more abundant because it is warmer sooner. So just a little tip, if you want to have a crab feast or any kind of event where you're planning on crabs being the main center attraction, try to do it in September and October because that is when crab prices will decline. You're welcome. So back to crab sizing, I'll tell you how we size our crabs, um, but this is not, again, this is not a universal term. Not everyone does it like this. Some states actually weigh the crabs by weight. So this is just how we at Chesapeake Crab measures crabs, and this is the way that I think is best. A small is between five inches to five and a quarter inches. Medium would be around five and a quarter to five and a half. A large would be from five and a half to six. And then an extra large would be from six to six and a half, and a jumbo is six and a half and above. Now, yes, that's very confusing, and sometimes it changes throughout the year because crab size does change, but this is the general roundabout term of what your crab sizes should be based on the name small, medium, large, extra large, and jumbo. It should be around that amount. So make sure when you are buying crabs from places, don't just look at what they call the crabs. Ask them what what inches are your large males? What size are your jumbos? Because some places sell jumbos that are our larges. And then they come to us and say, oh, why are yours so much more expensive? And I say, oh, well, look at the size difference. It's, a, it's an inch difference. It's a half inch difference. It might not sound a lot, but it is. So make sure when you, if you do want bigger crabs, you do ask what the inches are. If they can't tell you what inches they are, then you need to get your crabs from somewhere else. I know if I was to buy crabs from another person, which I actually don't ever do because I've been around crabs my entire life. My brother catches them. I live in a marina. I will never have to buy crabs from anyone. But if I were, I would want to see them live before I actually get them. I want to be able to look at them, feel them for myself because it's kind of hard to judge how the size of a crab is by verbally someone telling you. So if you do buy crabs, go ahead and ask them, hey, can I check the crabs out? Can I hold one? Can I pick one up? Can I see what they look like? Make sure you do that because if they refuse or they can't show you the crabs, they might be pre-steamed and they might be selling you old crabs. So keep that in mind whenever you buy crabs, even if they're not from us, if you're buying crabs from wherever, just tell them because they should be able to show you the crabs and you should be able to see what you're buying before you get it. At Chesapeake Crab Trailer, we do actually steam everything to order because in my experience, I think just crabs are way better when they're steamed to order right away straight off the pot in the box into your belly that is in my experience the best way to eat them every once in a while I'll have a canceled order someone that canceled their order after we already put their crabs in so then we're left with crabs that are already steamed at that point I'll offer them to people that want crabs but I'll let them know like hey these were already steamed they um, came out of the pot someone didn't want them and then I'll offer them at a discount just because I think everyone should get their crabs fresh I think that's the best way to eat them Really, I think that's the best way to eat anything for, is fresh. <laughs> when you are buying crabs from someone that's not us, this is what you have to look out for. Make sure you smell your crabs and that they do not smell like bleach because I have actually had some customers that came up to me and said they got crabs from somewhere else while we were closed and that they got rotten crabs. If any kind of seafood, if it smells like bleach, it is rotten, it is spoiled, do not eat it. It will make you sick and it is not good for you. I actually had an experience, I'm not going to name the place just because I don't want to be that person, but um, I'll tell you the story. I actually went somewhere else and bought shrimp. This was when the trailer was closed because normally I would never buy seafood from another place, but I was really craving shrimp and we were closed, so I didn't have any. So I went to this place and got shrimp. It was I got it steamed. Um, it was already steamed. I did not see it get steamed. So I took it home. I didn't, you know, investigate it right then and there, which was stupid of me. I get home and go to eat it and it smelled like bleach and it was disgusting and I spit it right out and complained. Sorry, that was Kyle. He always tries to ruin everything. Anyway, it seems we got off topic talking about shrimp. Back to crabs. So the appearance of crabs, I'm going to explain next the difference between male and female crabs more in depth. 
Obviously, it is called blue crab for a reason, and this is because of the bluish color on their claws. Now, granted, not all blue crabs are actually blue. I've seen ones that are brownish. I've seen ones that are more greenish. I've, I've actually seen a crab with purple claws. So they do come, and I've even seen black ones, and I've seen white ones. Literally all black, all white. It's very interesting. So there's all kinds of colors of crabs, but on general, this they are blue. The females have a red tip on top of their pincher claws, the two claws at the top with big pinchers on them. They have red tips on their blue claws. So this is the main difference that you can identify the differences. Another difference, if you flip it over and look at its belly, the apron is actually a different shape. There are three shapes of aprons. The male is like a T, it's a weird T-ish shape. A female is going to be either a sharp triangle or a rounded triangle. The sharp triangle, like I mentioned before, is the immature female crab. A rounded triangle is a mature female crab. And when I say mature, I don't mean that she is mature <laughs> in terms of her being smarter. I'm saying mature as in she has mated and she has mated once because females only mate once in their lifetime, but we'll get into more of that later. In terms of differences of male and female crabs, I've also noticed a lot of the time that female crabs are smaller, but they are fatter than the male crabs. Male crabs tend to be a little bit bigger and longer in their shell width, but they are not as seemingly as fat, whereas females seem like they have a really fat belly. And that's probably because they're either carrying eggs or because they had already dispersed their eggs. Now I just want to point out a female crab carrying eggs, if you can see the egg sac, which is called the sponge, um, it's called a sponge crab when a female is pregnant. If you can see that, it is illegal and you must put it back in the water. This is because, um, again, we want to help the population. You can't just take a female crab, which literally carries like two million babies in her egg sac. Um, that's going to really hurt the population. So you need to throw that back, give her a chance to let her babies grow and mature and get bigger. All right, next topic we're going to discuss is the crab habitat. Now, crabs have been found as far south as Uruguay and Argentina, and this is because crabs have stowed away on ships and basically traveled and then jumped off, and then they have become an invasive species in someone else's waters. Typically, they are found in the Atlantic region, but they have been found in other places. For example, they've been found in Egyptian waters, Italy, Israel, Greece, and Turkey. So, um, this crab has been found all over the world, and all people over the world have found ways to eat it, sell it, and make a profit off of it. Which again, we will get into a little bit more in depth later on in this video. So blue crabs actually survive in brackish waters and estuaries. Brackish water is basically a mixture of salt ocean water and fresh clear water. That's what brackish means. And this is where the crab thrives, which is why they do so well in the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland and Virginia. You can actually get blue crabs in other states other than Maryland. It's not just a Maryland thing. Blue crab lives in Florida. They live in the Carolinas, Georgia, basically all up the East Coast. You can find blue crab. It's just that the ones coming out of Maryland, the ones that have been in Maryland long enough to soak up that brackish water and let it get through their system, it is said that those crabs have a sweeter meat and is why they are more preferred to crabs coming out of the South. Now this next one's gonna be a tip for any potential crabbers out there, so make sure you pay attention. Blue crabs tend to be more abundant in shallow water and during warm weather, obviously. But, so any area where there's like swampy marshes or some kind of seagrass would be a really good place because that's where they like to hide out. It's also where they do their mating and their eating. So that is going to be the best place for you to look for crabs. Now, females actually prefer a higher salinity water. That means more salt in the water. So they are going to go further down south, whereas male crabs are going to be more of an upper bay because they like lower salinity water. They like more clear water. So if you're preferring to catch male crabs, go north. If you want females, go south. Speaking of females, the next topic we're going to be discussing is crab mating. Ooh. So this is a very interesting fact that I don't think a lot of people know. Female crabs actually only mate once in their lifetime with one male crab. Wow. Of course, the male crabs mate multiple times with multiple female crabs. Um, typical, but 
That's just how it is. Once this female mates for this one male, she can actually carry around and store this crab sperm for multiple spawnings, but she will only use, she will only mate once. If you've ever seen two crabs stuck together, this is actually part of their mating process. It's called cradling. Um, he actually does this to protect the female from other males from being mated with. So it's kind of a possession thing. Female crabs can only mate during their terminal molt, which is basically when they are about to shed their shell, and that's when they get mated with. So this cradling male crab will come up, cradle her, wait for her to molt, mate with her and then he'll actually stick around with her until she sheds her shell and hardens to protect her and make sure that no one else mates with her and I would like to think to make sure that his babies survive. And then he leaves and goes on about his way and they probably never see each other again. Real cold world. This mating season occurs May through October obviously because those are the months where the crab is not buried under the mud because of the cold winter. So they typically mate during the times that they can be caught. Once these crabs mate, the egg mass, which we explained earlier, the sponge mass, develops underneath the female's apron. Her apron will actually come, not come off, but it will separate from her bottom shell and a giant orangish, yellowish sponge looking like thing will start growing out of it. And that is actually an egg sac holding more than 2 million baby crabs. Oh my gosh takes about two weeks for these eggs to continue to grow. At that point, they are released into the water and carried out into the ocean by the current. They do not stay with the mother. They are washed out to sea. So it is actually in the ocean that these crab babies or lar larvae, larvae, whatever they're called, they grow. They molt over 25 times before they actually get big enough to return back to the estuaries in which their parents came from. Now during this process, only a small percentage of those 2 million babies will actually survive and make the journey back home. Again, real cold world. At around 12 to 18 months, the crab is going to be mature and it is going to be legal size and able to get caught and harvested. Next topic is going to be diet because you are what you eat. What do crabs eat? Pretty much anything. Like I said earlier, they are omnivores, meaning they eat both plant and meat. Um, they eat anything, clams, mussels, snails, dead fish, plants, and they'll even resort to eating one another if they're hungry enough. I have witnessed in our shedding operation that I talked about earlier, I have seen crabs eating other crabs that were coming. They weren't even out of their shells yet. They were in the process of molting their shells and another crab came up and started eating him. Cold, cold world. Be careful where you are getting your crabs from. Make sure you ask them where they are catching their crabs. I've actually heard some pretty gross stories. Um, a police officer, I again won't mention any names, a police officer out of Baltimore actually told me that they have pulled bodies, human bodies, up out of the harbor and that had crabs feasting all over them. So if you get crabs, make sure you don't catch them out of the harbor because I wouldn't want to eat that. I don't think anyone would want to eat that. Speaking of eating crabs, our next topic is crabs as food. They are prized for their sweet flavor and their tender, delicate meat. Um, I have noticed the male crabs have a little bit more tender, flakier white meat, whereas the female crab kind of resembles more of a dark meat, if that makes sense. Um, I have also heard that the female crabs are sweeter, and the female crabs also tend to have that yellow, eggy, orange stuff on the inside. Now these are eggs before they have spread and been fertilized, but they are also a delicacy. Just in case you're interested on the nutritional value of crabs, per one cup, that's 135 grams of cooked crab meat, there is one gram of fat, 131 milligrams of cholesterol, 533 milligrams of sodium. Keep in mind if you add crab seasoning, that is going to make that number go way up. Um, 350 milligrams of potassium, 24 grams of protein, 12% of your daily dose of calcium, 3% of iron, 10% of vitamin B6, 12% of magnesium, and 75% of coagulum, which is another word for vitamin B12. 
crabs are a little high in cholesterol so if you're trying to watch your cholesterol eating crabs may not be the best idea for you just keep that in mind because we don't want anyone getting sick from eating too many crabs from too many crabs to not enough crabs our next and final topic is going to be crab population and the decline in the recent years Unfortunately, over the last decade or so, the blue crab population in the Chesapeake Bay has reached some of their lowest numbers ever due to overfishing and habitat degradation. In response to these no low population numbers, the DNR, Maryland Department of Natural Resources, has enacted in 2008 a uh, regulation for female crabs telling you how many crabs you can actually catch now. Over the years, this regulation has changed. They've changed policies. I believe just recently this year, they have changed it again and lowered it some more. Not only are crabs one of the most popular and sought out harvested seafood, not only in our area, but around the world, but they're also preyed upon by natural predators such as bass and other blue crabs. So it is very important that as humans, we try to protect the population and keep them alive because where would we be without crabs? Crabs don't only help us out because they're delicious, they're actually really good in maintaining the ecosystem that we live in. The crabs eat other fish and certain things that when the crab population goes down, it is an inverse relationship and the population of the things they eat goes up and then there's too many of them. So we really need to watch out and make sure that the crab population stays in a good range. We can all do our part in making sure that crabs don't get wasted, make sure if you buy crabs you use them. Um, I'll post a link above to our, red, our video of how you can save crabs for the winter because I know myself sometimes I get stuck with cooked crabs that you can't throw back in the water. You don't want to waste them because that's wasting crabs. So freeze them, don't ever let crabs go to waste. Um, don't buy more than you need, don't catch more than you need, don't catch more than the legal limit. Don't catch crabs that are illegal and undersized because that's hurting the population as well. Don't catch sponge crabs, female crabs, all these things go towards saving the crab population and we all need to do our part to make sure that the crab population doesn't only continue but begins to thrive. So if you like eating crabs, if you know anyone else that likes eating crabs or catching crabs, share this video with them, let them know, share the crab facts with them, help us save them the crabs i hope you all like this video and found it informative hopefully you learned something new today comment below let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything i missed or did not discuss today check out our page we do have some other videos featuring crabs how to eat crabs how to clean crabs how to save crabs and how to cook crabs as well as all kinds of crab recipes and also free crab giveaways Thanks again for watching, everyone. Catch you Catch later. You later. Put that camera away. <laughs>